guys. This is Woods Runner here. Here with my brother, teaching him about fire and how to use an axe, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to be starting a series here called Winter Shelters, Winter Survival Shelters. And uh, before I go over that, your clothing is your first shelter, your first line of defense. So, I'll just show you what I'm wearing. And you may be different, but this just works for me. So, I'll show you here. Kyle's in the background, stoking the fire. Um, first thing you want, take my backpack off here. You want to keep your stuff dry. So instead of setting it on the ground, I just set it on like a branch or a knot or something. Like a hook of some sort to keep it off the ground and dry. Now what I've got here may look kind of weird. I'm wearing two plaid shirts. I wear these a lot in the fall and they work great for that. But for the winter time, one's not enough. So I'm wearing two here. It's uh, it is cotton. It's got this synthetic down stuff. It works really good. It's really thick insulation. And I find that if I'm chopping wood or working or something, that if I've got them both buttoned up like this, I can unbutton one if I get hot or even two. Or I can take one off if I'm getting way overheated or if it gets wet. Then I've still got this. I could button it up or leave it open. Or I could even take that off if I'm getting way too hot. So, yeah, I got two of these. You've seen me wearing them before. They're great. I like them. But they're not as good as wool because these are cotton and they soak up a lot of the water if they get wet. So I'm in the process of making myself a coat or a blanket coat. Okay, I was putting on a bunch of leaves. Right, Kyle? Yeah. If you ever need to get rescued, you put wet leaves on there, right? Make a lot of smoke. But don't put the fire out. So, you got that. Next thing I'm wearing, or next thing I'll talk about, just this hat. Got a hat here. My hair doesn't look too good, probably, but I don't care. It's a uh, just a Gander Mountain one I got for Christmas. It's uh, it's fleece on the inside, cotton on the outside. It's uh. All acrylic. So, works good. Any hat, really. You'll see me wearing different ones throughout this series. But, you should have a hat. A lot of your heat is lost through your head. Not 90%, like some people say, because if that was true, I could just wear a hat and nothing else. And I'd be fine. And that's not, that's not the case. You need more than a hat. Kyle's left to go get some more wood. Um... Next thing I got here is a shirt, Gander Mountain shirt. It's synthetic. I think it's acrylic. It's one of those wicking ones. It's from Gander Mountain also. You know, it's just like a wicking layer, you know? You need some sort of wicking layer. Cotton, probably not the best idea for that because cotton soaks up moisture. But you want to stay dry on the inside. Remember the acronym, COLD. C stands for clean. You want to keep it clean. The O stands for avoid overheating. You don't want to overheat because then you sweat and you get cold. I mean, the sweat cools, you know, you're wet. Uh, the next one, L. You want to wear loose layers. This is pretty loose. It's a medium. I wear small sometimes because they're kind of form-fitting, but this is loose and these are loose. And they're layers. Layers work better than one giant shell because you can thermoregulate more. Take them off, put them on, you know. And the D, what does the D stand for again? Huh. Want to keep them in good repair. You don't want to, uh, you don't want them dirty. You know, keeping it in uh, good repair. I'll look up that cold acronym. I got most of it. I'll do a video on that. Um, what I'm wearing for pants? These are corduroys. You know, like you used to wear in second grade. Or I like to wear with sweaters, but they're really warm. Again, they're not as good as wool, but they're good. 
Yeah, they're good. Um, on my feet here, I've got. Hopefully, you can see that. I've got one pair of socks on because it's not that cold outside, and they're 85% wool and 15% acrylic or synthetic or something like that. Might be cotton, but these are good socks. I found they work for me very well. Apparently, the 100% wool socks are very hard to come by because I've went to like 10 stores and none of them seem to have it. This one guy at the military store told me that wool socks will tear up faster than these uh, blended ones, but I've yet to yet to prove that. If it were really cold, I'd wear 100% wool. And these boots here are just Rockies. They have thin slit on the inside. Any pair of good boots will do, but make sure they're quality. I've tested these over and over again on winter camping trips and they seem to do the job. So, um, what now? Underwear. You can wear long underwear or you can wear the regular short underwear. I'm wearing short underwear because honestly it's not that cold today. It just looks like it because there's snow. And the ashes are falling, so it looks like it's snowing. But, yeah. Another thing, let me put my clothes on before I freeze to death. Because it is somewhat cold. I think it's in the 30s. 36, maybe. Alright. Another thing. This is, your, this is your first shelter. You want clothing that does the job. So that if you're in the woods and you can't get a fire going for some reason or it's getting dark, you can just cuddle up in a hollow tree stump and wait the night out. It's not going to be comfy, but it's going to keep you alive. That's all you need. So to make sure your clothing does that job. And uh, one more thing, you want to make sure you have a good fire kit. This is uh, waterproof. I should have a dry bag, but it takes up too much room. There. All right. So, in here, I don't care if people say it's cheating. You want to have a Bic lighter, a new Bic lighter. Make sure it works, um, just for easy flame. I don't care if people say it's cheating. It's not. It's going to keep you alive, and I'd rather be a living cheater than a dead, than a dead person who goes by the rules, I guess. In here, I've just got some, just got some dryer lint that's impregnated with Vaseline, and that stuff burns for like three minutes, five minutes. Really works good. I've got two bundles of that. I could probably make three tinder bundles with that. There's a car coming, sorry. I have here a pine knot and these suckers, these will go. They burn hot and bright. They do burn kind of fast though, so got a, that's what you got the tinder for I guess. There's some more tinder. Right here I've got some dry pine. It's not exactly fat wood but it's dry and uh, it works. Here I have a candle. Candles are excellent for, for uh, fire starting. You just light the sucker up. And you don't have to waste fluid or anything. And I don't have to tell you how long this will burn. Okay, so next I've got some pine pitch in place of like an artificial tinder like wet fire or mini inferno or something you know what I mean trioxane or something but this stuff oh my gosh it goes up like gasoline oh man it works great I had some birch bark in here but I used it to make that fire there there's my hand that fire so I don't have any of that in here got some chart cloth 
and for the people who don't know what this is, I'll make a video soon. And that's just, just in case, you know, redundancy. I have a lighter, and here, right here, a sparkler. You know, like you use on the 4th of July when you're a kid. These are great fire starters. And I know you don't, you wouldn't think that they are, but they, they do the job so well. I was on a winter camping trip, I couldn't get a fire started. Lit one of these suckers up, didn't have a problem. They burn hot, but they burn kind of fast, and they burn down, so you got to keep adjusting. But that's just to, like, dry stuff out. In here also, I've just got a little jackknife, just, you know, for making feather sticks or something. It's an old Barlow. It's, uh, two blades. It's pretty patinaed. Razor sharp, of course. And I think that's it. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Sparkler, if you're going to keep your stuff in a plastic bag like this, then, and if you're using a sparkler, I bent the uh, tail around like that, so it's smooth like that, rounded on the edge, so it won't tear a hole in it. I had that happen to me. And on my keychain, which I've always got with me, I've got a ferro rod. And a striker, just cause you can use it for uh, you can use it for a pry bar. It's not quality, but all right. Well, there's the intro to my winter shelters video series that I'm going to be doing. Ah, uh, Kyle, that's my brother. Say hi to the camera. Yeah, he's uh. A little fire crazy like we all do. Our first fire. Not his first. You know. No supervision. Woo! Well, that's all. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Um, yeah, I couldn't make videos in Wisconsin. I just got distracted. I ran the best race of my life there, by the way, if you're wondering. But, anyway. I'll see you guys later.